In this video, we're going to be making this little handheld 3D printed case, Teensy based Tetris game that I wrote. Um, we'll take a quick look at, at the development board. I'll go through the versions of the case until I got to this point and a quick talk about the programming. And then we'll actually put this together and give it a play. This is my prototype of the Teensy Tetris. So we have the SPI based screen. I made it initially with the Teensy 3.6. I also wired up this little control panel with one of these little joysticks and some buttons. So that's all that's needed really. This screen is not made specifically for the Teensy, but it's highly optimized for it and the examples come with code that's pretty much set up to work with it straight away. So they don't really need to do too much to it. We'll just power it on via the USB. And there we go. So this is not as up to date as I have on the actual unit itself, but it's totally playable. So we can go left and right. We can drop the pieces down. We can rotate. You can move them until the very last second, just like you can in most of the other versions of Tetris. And then we can see that it completed the line for me. The way that I wrote this was uh, from scratch and uh, it was really interesting to figure out all the little issues. The first one was I needed a background. So the white border uh, acts as, as a visual background, but it's also a background to help with stopping tiles going off the area that we don't want to use. All the blocks are I think a five by five grid. And when we put the block on the screen, we draw all five blocks. But if we see that the value of a block is zero, it draws the background instead of whatever the color is for the block that we want to see. When a block is actually physically placed on the tile, we then store it into the memory of the background. So the next time that a tile is put on the screen, it will redraw whatever is around it because that last tile was stored into memory. Anytime that we do a movement left or right, there is a routine that we'll see if I do that move, does it clash with anything in the background? So that's a simple uh, for next loop that just says, is the background empty if I do this move or if I do this rotation? That was really simple. And then whenever we do a move, there's another routine that just says um, it checks for the whole of the blank area line by line, looking to see if the line is complete. If it's complete, it does the animation of the white line that goes across, deletes the line, and then drops everything down into memory. When we've finished the game and we've got to the very top, it will go back to an original version of the the white border and replace the working game memory. The next part that I need to do is work on the scoring so that we can actually get some kind of gameplay. So maybe um, scoring based on how quickly that you do it. I want to do it so that, let's just let it finish. So if you do the drop down, by the way, when you drop down, you can't change your mind. It won't let you. So that's more of a risk. So you get more of a score than if you do it slowly. Um, and then obviously if you do a, a one line or a two line or a three line or the four lines, which is a Tetris, then that increases your score as well. So there's still quite a few bits to do, but the game is actually fully working. I even had the sound. So it plays the, the what we would class as the, the um, classic Tetris music, but it got really annoying and I turned it off. Um, I also turned it off because I want to have game sounds and the music at the same time. So I need to work out 
how to do them side by side. So this is the prototype and this is the basic game working. The next step was to make um, a, a more permanent solution. So that's what I will show you next. So this is the next version that I made. Let's try and get it so that it's not so flashy on the screen. So it's just the same circuit as we had on the prototype board. Um, we've got four buttons, so we've got move left, move right, rotate, drop. But if you do drop and rotate, it will do the drop all the way down. Then on the back, we have a Teensy 3.2. When I did my development, I actually slowed the 3.6 down to the speed of a 3.2. And, um, and it's just basically uh, ground across the bottom for the buttons and then the buttons and the screen going back to the Teensy. Uh, there's the resistor there, which is the uh, for the LED of the screen. And I kind of knew that I was going to do a multi-part 3D printed case. So I made sure that the connections between the top and the bottom is flexible. And I've worked on um, the case for the past week. So this is the first version, which was printed as quickly as possible. And you can see that it was printed uh, this way up with supports on the inside. And uh, it was printed at 0.28. So you can, you can actually see the steps on the top. I was gonna do the button controls across the bottom, but then I'm probably gonna try and write some more games for this. So eventually I removed that. So that was the first one. Then I started to split the split the sections up. So the first part is still the same, but I just sliced it across that section. And then we have the top. So the top can now be printed with that side facing down so that we get a cleaner surface. Uh, this one was still printed the same as the other one so that we've got the supports on the inside. Then um, we printed both parts that way. And I started to work on some details on the inside so that we've got the supports for the screen, support for the PCB on the inside, a way to lock the top and the bottom together. We also have latches at the front. This one didn't print particularly well, but um, again, it was printed as quickly as possible. Uh, so we've got the supports at the bottom for the game board. And now that would slide into there and clip down into place. Now we're starting to get into trying to make it look a bit nicer. And um, whereas before I was printing in the cheapest PLA that I have, this is printed in Proto Pastas High Five Blue. So this is like three times the cost of the other PLA, but this PLA just is such a nice material to work with. Um, it's so nice. So uh, just like refining what I had before where we've got the clips for everything to fit in. So that would slide on and then clip down. My next issue was that I didn't like to see the print patterns from uh, the first layer. So I wanted to get some kind of detail on there. So I started experimenting with um, a shape on the first layer. And I actually made the cubes in the 3D model itself. So I experimented and I settled on the concentric pattern so that we get these actual cubes on the front with a gap. Um, the rest of it is pretty much the same. So I really like that. It just adds a bit of detail rather than just seeing the print lines. And then obviously from there, I wanted to do Tetris patterns, but um, using the same settings, it didn't print 
quite so well. So you can see the patterns, but depending on how the light looks, the actual filament itself changed how it looked and you kind of lost the Tetris, key, uh, Tetris grids that I put in. So after quite a bit more tweaking and printing, I've got these three parts. So we can see the Tetris grids are a lot more cleaner, apart from a few printing errors. The gap came out really nice. And we've got this stood up the grid on there. Added some details for the power boost for the LiPo and a switch. We have just some um, simple retention clips for the base so that we can clip the whole thing together. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, assemble all these and put it together. So we have um, Adafruit Power Boost 1000, right angled uh, micro USB, red LED, which is to indicate that the battery is getting low. I don't really show any other things. We obviously know that it's on when the screen is on. It does have charge LEDs, um, but I just want to know when the battery is getting too low. And then a 3.7 volt LiPo, which was taken out of an old uh, tablet that my parents gave me, which wasn't working. <laughs> so I've reused it. So we're just going to slide the LiPo under these just brackets. So that will just hold that into place. And then these two wires are the uh, enable switch. So when they're shorted together, it turns everything off. But I need to put the switch on on the outside of the case before I can put this in. So we should be able to um, put this into here now. So we've got supports on the back on the hole for the switch. The switch is just a, a normal toggle switch. So now it's switched off. And that just goes in the back. And then I have these tiny screws. If you make, uh, I think they're like 2.5 mil and I, I just make a two mil hole and they screw in nicely. So now this board gets screwed in just there. got a hole for the LED so we will just do a tiny dab of super glue push that into the hole so that's that part next we want to put uh, the screen into the top section and these are uh, Still 2.5 mil, but they, they've got uh, a slightly bigger pan head to them. I'm not doing them too tight. It's just, just so that I can keep it in place and then we can tweak it afterwards. Get it lined up. Yep, that looks okay. So now all four screws are in. I'll tighten it up. Okay, so that's the screen in place. And now we can slide that through there. We lock that underneath the top clip, the top section in. 
done that. Let's hold in with some more of those screws. Let's just uh, line this up because there's two screw holes just to hold that top bit down at the back. So that's everything locked in place. The last thing is to pop in that right angled USB. So there we have our development board with the TNT, the screen in the background, the switch and the power boost. So this time Yeah, so now we get a nice click. So there we have our assembled Teensy Tetris. So, flick the switch. And here we go. So this is the, the, the later version. So rather than it going straight into the game, it now goes into like a, a game screen. Let's zoom in a bit. So if we press drop, We can rotate and we can drop the lines down. And then if you press those two together, we can do the quick drop. And there we saw the white line. So yeah, so that is my Teensy Tetris. Uh, I really like the details on the front. The Tetris tiles came out really nice. This um, High Five Blue just prints so nice. Like, let's look at the, the print lines. You don't see them, and this is not printed at a particularly high resolution. And yeah, like, not bad for a first layer. You can actually see where things have been stuck to my uh, print bed. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, for the first time that I've tried to actually write a game on, on an Arduino or the Teensy as it is, um, it came out pretty good. And yeah, I'm going to try and uh, do some more games on this. Um, the limitation is using the SPI and you can't do like frame buffers so you, as far as i know you can't fill a buffer and dump the whole screen to the uh, and dump the whole thing to the screen it doesn't have enough bandwidth to receive a whole screen at once so it'd be ideal to have um two buffers in memory update one and then send it rather than having to send the actual bits that you're drawing um, i can show you you see there the green dot. So the green dot is the next pattern, the next tile that's coming up, by the way. So that, that's the score and those are the only parts that are like drawn over the top of everything else. And because they're not part of the background memory, then when the tile's drawn over, it gets put over the top of that. I really enjoyed making this. I have to say that I've been playing this way too much. I think I got to about 100 lines on it. So Maybe it's a bit too easy. Um, I can easily increase the, the level on it. So I could do like um, three starting levels so that you can jump in at a, a faster pace straight away. That's quite easy to do. And I also want to get it so that it stores the, the number of lines in the, uh, in the EEPROM that's built into the Teensy so that it remembers it. And like I said earlier, actually getting the score rather than just the number of lines that you've made anyway so uh, thank you for looking at my teensy tetris i hope you like that and i will see you again soon